Okay. Well, let's get started. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Day four, RSA. Great to see everybody. My name's Sean Atkinson, CISO for the Center for Internet Security. I'm joined by my best friend, Chris. Thank you, Sean. Chris LG, I work with CounterHack Challenges doing penetration testing and building cyber labs. I'm also a certified SANS instructor in penetration testing, and I'm, in, I'm a cyber warfare officer in the Army National Guard. Perfect. Disclaimer, I'm gone. So one of the things we wanna do uh, today is really figure out the why. Why are we talking about this partnership? Why are we talking about creating camaraderie between the CISO and the pen tester? We're also looking at responsibilities from necessarily the blue side of the house, the red side of the house. And what we're doing here with everyday examples, we're gonna go through a little bit of scenario analysis and just get your thoughts on, is this mentality prevalent within your organizations? Have you gone through and seen this in other organizations or from other perspectives? Uh, and then we'll go into a conclusion. So the why. Um, we want pen testers in our environment to make us better, right? Gap analysis, finding out the vulnerability. Where are we not doing things right and where could we improve, okay? Now we could do that internally, but I also like uh, an external perspective because the internal myopic approach may not be giving us a complete picture of our underlying security posture. So in a sense, what we're trying to do is this is not a red versus blue exercise, okay? It should be collaborative. That's why we're friends. We want to do this together. In a lot of cases, and we'll go through the scenarios, we may see where it does become adversarial. Or you create that fortress mentality where I don't want you to have anything. You're gonna have to find it all yourself. I'm not giving you anything in this uh, scenario. But the ultimate why is to understand the value of the underlying engagement. So what we're doing is we're building a capability to mitigate risk. We need to identify that risk, we need to mitigate it, we need to understand what it is for our environment at that particular point in time. Okay. So we're looking at both our strengths and weaknesses, because it's not just um, grabbing the shells as it were, it's finding out where also we've got a strong security posture. What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? Where could we be better? And how can we better engage in a respective pen test? And so over iterations, we've improved that underlying process. So we need the expert assessment, right? We're hiring this respective organization in order to get their expertise into our organization to understand where's the resiliency, where's the underlying weakness. So value is not gener generated respectfully in this restricted scope perspective, right? So what we want to do is start opening doors and saying here's an opportunity for us to understand our complete posture. Ego aside, I need you to help me understand my layers of defense, where I'm strong, where I'm weak, okay? And success is not scored as a clean report, okay? It's ultimately this perspective, um, and why I mentioned ego previously. The clean report, great. I mean, if you've got an underlying security posture that an, an external penetration tester, an expert goes through and says, yeah, you're good across all levels. Here's some recommendations. Here's some informational, some lows. The critical highs are taken care of. Fantastic, well done. That's awesome. But that doesn't mean necessarily improvement. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're done, right? Is security ever done, please? No. It's a point in time assessment, right? So we give respectfully our external penetration testers two weeks. We give in our adversaries, and I think this was from the day one keynote, 277 days before we find them. There's a little bit of a different balance, isn't there? You know, we're giving our friends, not necessarily enough time, all the information in order to make good decisions and help us improve our maturity. And we agree on price before it starts. The yeah, pentesters, well, right? very not true, the, uh, not the very true. Yeah, absolutely right. So I'm looking at this, the critical security control. So I'm looking at 18, was 20 down to 18, and we're looking at number 18 here. This would be, should be the force multiplier for your underlying security program. Here's where we're now starting to identify and assess externally our approach to underlying security practice, okay? So we go through representative policy, we manage all of the representative controls. Here's a measure of how well we've implemented those controls. So let's go to blue. So where am I? So what we need to do is identify ultimately the goals of the pen test, right? Why are we, have, why are we doing this? Now, in some cases, is it compliance? 
right? Do I just need the checkbox to move on to the next item within the checklist? Personally, the wrong thing to do. Do we agree? Wonderful. So it is a checkbox. Do we agree that the reason for a pen test is to understand vulnerability, not just to be compliant? Yes. Please, yes. Wonderful. Thank you. You had me scared then for a second. Bloody hell. <laughs> All right. So now we're trying to understand our business risk. Okay. Let's take an approach where we're understanding, looking at the rules of engagement, the statement of work, to understand the approach we need to take as an organization to understand risk. Okay. I need to evaluate criticality, right? I want to do some scenario analysis. Let's do some threat modeling. Let's do it together. And let's figure out an approach that helps build a capability of resiliency in our organization, respectfully, at that point in time. And does this become security theater, okay? Oh, we're doing a pen test, and I can bring this to a risk committee, a board of directors, leadership, C-suite, whomever, and say, oh, look what we've done. We've checked the box on this respective area, but really, the theater shouldn't be a drama. It should be an underlying an understanding of entertainment to get us to a point where we are fresh in our understanding of our current vulnerability and an articulation of our risk. Doing that allows us to approach these things a lot more gracefully, a lot more gracefully. We need to scope well, so we need to understand our environment. As mentioned, going through uh, threat modeling, understanding criticality in our organization, but also understanding future change within our environment What's the underlying potential exposures in that space? Okay. So we're building new web app. We've got annual review. We're on-prem, cloud, physical, wireless. What do we need to cover? In a lot of perspectives, all of it. In a lot of perspectives, oh, we may scope to a particular section of this in order to really, truly understand and have a full assessment of our organization within a respective parenthetic. Absolutely. Absolutely fine. Now, we have elements here of permissive rules of engagement. Now, in some cases, the rules of engagement defining the underlying um, constraints that we're going to put against our respective friend. Okay? But we've got to think about how effective that would be to constrain them down to using Nmap, and that's it. What are you going to get from that? Nothing that you couldn't do yourself. So what I'm saying here is let's open up those doors, open up those gates, and have a talk about it for a second. Not define it yourself in a vacuum. Okay? but work through it together. What makes sense for what we're trying to do in terms of the underlying scope and what we need to get out of this assessment? And then it's totally okay to have checkpoints. In a lot of cases, those are twice a day. We start off in the morning. What's the opportunities we're looking at today in the afternoon? What are the risks that have been discovered or where are the successes within our environment? Doing that, creating the underlying communication is critical in these spaces. There's limited time. We want to get as much information from our respective friends as possible. OK, so we put the cards on the table. Here's what we've done internally with our own controls program. Here's what we've built as capability. This is what I want you to assess. I want to give you the architectural diagram. I want to give you past assessments. I want to give you past audits. That's what I want to share with my friend, and that's why I'm saying friend here, so that they understand where we are at this particular point in time. Okay? I don't want to close that off to the respective persons that are coming into our environment, the experts that could use that information to make us better, to move us forward in our maturity, in our security journey. That's where we need to be. Consider planting flags, uh, and I love this. So we forward the alerts, we do open source, we've got known weaknesses, past reports. We move then into really a considered element of what I'm going to call gamification. Okay? So we're going to play. I've got some flags in the environment. I want to see if you can get to these through these respective levels of control. If you can, ultimately that determines that there's weaknesses in the underlying posture. You know, there may be some early flags. We'll do CPS. We're expert in that. So we'll go through those processes and uh, work together on those. Again, necessarily disclosing the flag or necessarily disclosing that the flag exists is cool. Now, this reduces that sensitive data exposure because what I'm looking at is putting these flags in my most sensitive areas. If you can get to those, if you can bypass respective control, lateral movement throughout my environment, and access this information, there's an issue. Okay? Where possible, we want to purple team the experience. And so we've got red, blue, and you've heard it this week, and through other conferences, we want to be purple. Okay? So respective in my organization, Matt, my uh, security ops manager, 
both security operations and has the penetration testers under his team. He is purple, okay? That's what we need to do to continue to move this narrative forward. We check in with the pen test team, we net th let them know of the alerts. This is the gotchas, this is the game, okay? Find a flag, you've got us. We find you, we alert you. We play around. We go through this and do it in a way that's conducive to us building a rapport that allows us to go through this and actually exercise many of the processes that we've written into the scope. We wanna do that in a way that's really, in some cases, fun. And then findings are not for shaming. And so ultimately that's where we can have elements of the ego come into play and in that, uh, you know, I don't want any findings, so I'm gonna limit your respective scope because it looks bad on me. I'm the scissor, I'm supposed to be protect protecting all of this. Take that off the table. Let's take the personalities off the table. Let's find out where risk exists where weaknesses are, are applied and fix those. And in a lot of cases, we'll use the recommendations from our expert partners and friends to build a capability in this space. And so ultimately, we're not shaming our environment. You know, I'm not going to my underlying operations team and saying, what the hell is going on here? Where were these rules reviewed? Where's the underlying audit for these assessments to be completed to know that the, this type of capability doesn't exist in our environment? It's not the point of it. Finding it is, because I'd rather it be him than an adversary, right? But allowing that to uh, not shame is not blame. Appreciate um, that these are friends, right? Not the adversary. Now they have the adversarial mindset, right? They wanna get the flags, they wanna go through our environment. If they can get shell root, fantastic. That's ultimately an element of a goal. We'll see how Chris interprets that momentarily. We want to look at the continuity of the engagement, and this is, kind of an issue that we have. If you use a different pen testing service every year, that camaraderie is not necessarily built over time. So I'm saying there's an element of longevity. I've been working with Chris for five years. In terms of building this capability, this underlying program, in order for us to do this type of sharing, to understand each other's environments, to have his expertise come back and say, I understand, we work together. We're a partnership in this underlying process to understand risk and ultimately get to your objective. Want them to come back again. And this is what I tell Chris literally every time. Has findings, excellent. That's what I'm gonna use for the next year to improve, right, between engagements. And it's a little less than a year, but uh, we do it more continuously. But ultimately I say the next time you come back, it's gonna be harder because I'm gonna fix what you told me. Now how many people have had penetration test reports that you've done nothing with? Come on, be serious here. Two honest people, two honest people, two all right. Honest, right, exactly, exactly. But what's the point? What is the point of finding a risk and a vulnerability and doing nothing about it? It doesn't make any sense. Use that as impetus for uh, really reflectively getting funding, getting resources, finding and defining a capability that you want to improve over time. This is the essence of why we are friends in this case. My friend. Thanks, Brent. <laughs> so with all of that as the backdrop, right? This is, we know what the CISO wants out of this. We know what they're expecting, what they're hoping to get out of our engagement. Then we, the pen testers, have a lot that we need to do to make sure that, that the, the engagement is successful, that the relationship is beneficial to, the, to, to Blue. Uh, if, if you ask my boss, Ed Scotus, uh, about you know, the, the power and the, and the coolness of red, he'll say, I love red, I'm red through and through. I'm so red that if you cut me, I bleed red. Right? But he will tell you red only exists to make blue better. So, so how do we make blue better? And it begins with knowing what their goals are. <laughs> their goals are not keep the pen tester from getting DA, or you know, their goal is not uh, have, have no accounts susceptible to Kerber roasting. That's, that's not a, a business goal. You know, the business goal is gonna be something like uh, keep our factories running, keep people moving, keep people safe. Like those, those are business goals. So we have to know what that is as we go into an environment. Uh, so yeah, not maxing the shells. Um, and oh, by the way, we also have to have some understanding of how they do business. So if, for example, they are uh, an HR company or a staffing company and they're, and they're always getting in resumes of people and trying to place them, and we say, you know what? That file upload functionality you have for resumes, it's dangerous, okay? I, I didn't get a shell through it, but it's dangerous. You should turn that off. Is that a, is that a viable recommendation for them? No, right, they, they can't, that's, that's part of how they make money, it's part of what they do. So we have to understand what they're doing so we can give valuable recommendations there. And we're never gonna, gonna know the business as well as they do, but, but let's get a, at least a little bit fluent there. 
and then uh, and checking in frequently. This is this is a wonderful thing for us and for them. So you know, sometimes on an engagement, uh, we'll we'll check in in the morning, say, hey, we, we got this far, and then they'll say, oh, did did you see this thing? I'll say, no, I haven't seen that yet. Thank you. Check for that a little later. Uh, at the same time, too, we can say, hey, we got we got to here. Uh, we got near the um, near the HMIs, right? The the uh, controlling some of the, the operational technology, and they say, oh, great, that's awesome. Please stop there. We don't want to crash a train, right? Sean's not running trains, just but just you know, just in case. Um, and then also, whenever we find anything really significant, uh, I was on a different company. I was on a, a different pen test once where um, this organization had their sim exposed to the internet, which is which is bad. Um, you want that like locked down and behind VPN and all that. So, so I'm like, all right, th this is going to be a finding. And then, does anybody know what the easiest way to log into a sim is? It's somebody else's device, and you you know you, you see what the manufacturer is. How do you how do you log into it? Default. default password. Yes, Aaron knows. Yeah. So no kidding. We Google what's the default credential for whatever the sim was, and we got we got logged right in. Now that's something you could save for the report and like surprise them in a couple of weeks. No, you pick up the phone right away. Well, you get your screenshots, and then you pick up the phone and, and call them right away and, and have them fix that. Um, oh, and also before dangerous attacks, right? So um, another quick story. This one time, it wasn't me. Maybe it was me. There was a new vulnerability out, or a new exploit against a specific um, edge routing device. And, and the way it worked was uh, when you ran it against a victim machine, it would either give you shell on it, which is awesome for us, right? It would do nothing, or it would lock the machine up. So I would love to tell you that what I did was call them up first before I tried it, make sure it was a good time, but, but no, uh, what I did was try it and nothing happened and I was like, all right, that's fine. Then I tried it again and then I couldn't connect to the client anymore. So, so before that thing happens, right, call, we call up, we make sure it's a good time to do it, say maybe it's a good time to do that in the evening. Um, if, if that kind of thing happens over and over with the pen tester, do you know what the client should do or what the, what the CISO should do? Fire the pen tester, yes, yes, fire the pen tester. Okay, so uh, let, let them know what we're gonna try. No one loves the unannounced denial of service. Poop emoji for emphasis, okay. Uh, and we also wanna get caught at least once. And this is gonna sound strange for the red folks in the room, because you're like, I, I don't wanna get caught at all, right? I wanna be slow and low and get all the cool things and never, but if, if I never get caught, then how does Sean know what his clipping level is, right? How, how does he know what that squel if that squelch knob is in the right spot? Uh, if I if I never trip any alarms, so I mean I'll start low and slow and try to not uh, ring any, any, any alarm bells and, and will anyway because because that's Sean. Uh, but uh, but if I haven't been caught toward the end of the week, I'm going to start turning up the noise and turning up the noise and trying egress testing and uh, different types of malware and different systems just to see if I can trigger some alarm to give them even if it's not officially a red team engagement. I, I still like to give a little bit of feedback about what uh, what detection controls look like. Um, we don't want to be naughty, and this bleeds right into the next uh, next bullet. There, there are some uh, some pen testers, some social engineers who will use lures like this. You know, from local school department. Uh, your child was involved in an accident. Please click here to whatever. If you get a phishing lure like that from your pen tester, what do you do? Fire the pen tester. Yes, right, right. That's that's just not cool. There's so many more creative things we can do, right? That that's really sh sort of limiting yourself. Like I tell my kids, you know, when you hear people like telling jokes with, with potty words, that's because they're not smart enough to come up with a good joke. It's, it's the same way with social engineering. If you're not smart enough to come, with, come up with an acceptable fishing lure, then you need to try a bit harder. Um, and, then, and then the last, last thing on this one is, is we can't be afraid to, to deliver the, the hard messages, right? If, if, I, if I evaluate Sean's uh, program, and this isn't true of, of Sean's program, but if I say, you know, Sean, the problem is you, ju you just don't have enough people, right? You're a one on paper hanger and you, and you, need, it, you need more people or, or you're just going about things in, in the wrong way just in general. Like we have to be comfortable enough with them and they with us to be able to l deliver those hard truths in a pen test. And maybe that's hard because sometimes we're a little introverted, we're a little nerdy and we get stuck in our keyboard and we don't like talking about real issues like that, but we have to be able to. Okay. We, so when we do a report, this, and you'll see redacted pieces of, of actual reports, not his reports, uh, but just generic findings anyway, uh, we, we want to do things like giving wins. We want to give positive findings. Uh, this, is, this is getting a little squishy, a little, psychologi like a little psychological here, but if we just do nothing in a pen test report but say, here are the things you're doing wrong, the, the CISO will get less out of it. Like just, just as human beings, if we get nothing but criticism, we tend not 
to receive it as well. But if it's like, hey, you're doing this really well, you could work on this a little bit, and dang, you did a great job with that, they will receive your findings better. So, so do include those. And as Sean said too, it helps them uh, kind of level set and figure out where they need to place their emphasis in, in getting better, in maturing, in that continuing uh, uh, engagement. And then, um, and he mentioned too, forwarding alerts. And I know a few of you were like, when he said that, like, like if, if I trip EDR in your environment, are you gonna send me, like forward me the alert? And most of you are like, no bro, right? Try harder, that's, uh, that's on you. We're just gonna keep catching you for the rest of the week. But when, when he sends me an alert, then that lets me know, okay, you caught that. Will you catch this? Now, when I write up the methodology in the report, I'm gonna mention, hey, you caught this, and that's awesome, this is a positive finding. But then, looking at, at the depth there, trying to see what else we can do, I found another way through. So he learns more about his program because he told me what, what controls are working. Um, and, then, and then again, and, and back and forth. So I say, hey, I'm about to try this eternal blue thing. It, it works pretty well when it works well, but sometimes it's the old blue screen of death, so maybe just let me know if this is a good time, right? Okay. Also, we, we, love, we love all the nerdy data. This is a, a screenshot from the Bloodhound tool. Has anybody, is anybody familiar with Blood, Bloodhound? Okay, about uh, maybe half the room. So, uh, so Active Directory is, is, it's a powerful tool for admins, but it is really difficult to, to get a full picture of what's really going on in your, in your environment. With the provided tools, you can see kind of like a shot glass, like looking through a shot glass at a map. You can see all the little pieces, but it's hard to, pick, it's hard to see how uh, one person's access can, can affect what their effective access is across an environment. So Bloodhound draws this picture for us. We, we go in and run these collectors and it asks, asks a bunch of uh, questions with LDAP queries. It's, it's nerdy and fun. And then it gives us these pictures of, oh, if you can compromise Bob in finance, uh, he is an administrator of this machine and so-and-so has a session on that so they can steal his password and then they, and that's a member of this group and, and you can get domain admin just from starting at finance Bob. And isn't that interesting? So when we have this information, we share it, right? We, we don't just like use it to find the paths. We say, hey, hey, Sean, here's this stuff. And I, I did a couple cool things with it, but, but gosh, maybe this is useful for you going forward. So you can, you can shore up all those other little vulnerabilities that, the, that this map is showing you. So, so share and explain that data. All right, oops, that's the laser button. That doesn't advance slides at all. Now how about findings? We wanna make sure we're very clear in what happened. It was this system with this IP address. Here's the issue we found. Uh, here's a table of all the CVEs, and because some people like CVEs, right? Maybe you tie it into MITRE ATT&CK if that's something that they, that they work with in their organization, but be very clear in what the finding is. And then with that, we want to give multiple recommendations. So let's say, uh, let's say you're working with, um, with a finance company that is, that is using FTP to send client data across the internet. Is FTP a secure protocol? No. Clear text. Anybody in between can read all that data that's bad. So, so you could say, hey, shut off FTP. Maybe they can't. So you say, all right, well, maybe you can wrap it in another secure socket, or maybe you can at least IP restrict it so nobody else can hit those endpoints, something. Or here, you know, HP ILO, this is, these are the, uh, it's like the control plane for servers, where you can get in and, and spin servers up, turn them off. Um, hey, you're using ILO and it's an old version, so maybe you can upgrade the version, maybe you can uh, just turn it off if you're not using ILO, or maybe you can at least IP restrict and make sure it's behind a VPN and, 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 a, uh, and its own subnet. So you have lots of recommendations so your client is more likely to make the change because you've given them more choices and they can pick what fits their, their time budget, their dollar budget, and their operating environment, their business. And, uh, and then here's a, here's a bonus too. A lot of pen testers don't do this. Uh, we'll say, hey, once you've done this, if you think you're done, run this command. If you see this output, you're good. If you see this output, you still need to work on it. Now, we're happy to come back and help retest, but if I give Sean the tools to fish, then he doesn't have to have me come and do that, right? So he's, he's learning more and, and is able to iterate faster on his updates. So verification of findings. We like to, we like to teach. And maybe that's because we're, we're educators, right? A lot of the CounterHack staff are SANS instructors and authors. We, we like to educate people. We want everybody to get smarter about all this stuff. Um, and, uh, and then feedback too. When, when we write a report, we, we, know, we know something about the organization, right? We've been through it, we've found all the, the well, we found some skeletons, uh, but we don't know everything. Uh, so when we give a report to a client, we say, hey, this begins our two week review, review period. Go ahead, look through it. If you see anything that looks off, let us know. And if we miss something, we will absolutely update it. If you don't understand something, we'll, we'll, we'll add more to the report to make sure that's clear. Uh, but we wanna end up with 
a report that the client is really happy with, because this is all they get at the end of the end of the day, right? Is this report? It doesn't matter all the cool ninja things you did, all the shells you dropped. It's it's really the report that is that record going forward. So um, now, if they ask us, if they ask you like, well, can you delete that finding because we don't want it in there? Like, no. <laughs> if you can if you can explain why it's not a finding, then 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 great. But but we have to be honest brokers. But but still, that that review period I think is really helpful to help us build this relationship and keep things honest. So everyday example. Let's go. Yeah. So from this perspective, um, we'll use, I think we've got four in here. So the only reason I'm doing this is for compliance. That's why I was a bit nervous when we didn't do the compliance thing earlier. But I know my systems are secure, so I'm only doing this for compliance reasons. I have to do it for an underlying framework and an underlying requirement in order to meet that. So all I'm going to do is just bring you in, minimal scope, in and out, done. I know my systems are secure. Now it, let me turn that over to you. And there are some pen testers that are happy with that. Cool. A check in a box and a check in my pocket. See you next year. Anybody do that? Anybody seen that being done in the industry? Please, come on. There we go. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. No one here, but people you know. <laughs> people you know. Not here. Absolutely not. This is the experts are here. Let's go to the alternative then. So let's, let's change the script, change our mindset in terms of thinking about this appropriately. What we have is a robust security program, but let's see what the pen test team can find. And let's assist them in that space in order to understand whether we do know our systems are secure. Now let's prove it. Let's bring in experts to figure out where we're at in terms of moving our agenda of maturity forward. I can't do that alone. That's why I utilize experts, such as my best friend. That's right, and then I'm ex uh, excited to help my friend Find the things they don't know about, right? It's, it's, it's not like, hey, here's this one thing you can check that I know is fine. It's, it's help me explore and, and let me know what I don't know. And that's, that's really, I hope to bring that value. Absolutely yeah. right, absolutely right. So now we go with this mentality of access is denied. Uh, thou shall not bypass. I will only give the pen testers minimal access, okay? And information. It's their job to get into our systems. Anybody experienced that before? Those mentalities. I'm going to fortress this off. I'm paying you to get in, and I'm not giving you anything. How about that? And, and I've, I've done that. I've done that test. And it's here's my, our one IP address, and the only finding I get is, is responds to ping. I don't know what they get out of that, but that's what they paid for, and that's, that's it. It's a hell of a report. <laughs> All right. It's short. We hate reporting. <laughs> so that's, that's a, you know. Yeah. Let's do this alternative here, then. Let's, uh, uh, again, get our mindset in space. Let's evaluate our system defenses, opaque box. Pending any findings, we can provide information to assist in this space. Now, we're necessarily, that's why we're doing that communication on a daily basis, in our case, twice a day, in order to share this information. Well, so we're going to build, we're going to assist, we're going to build the assessments, we're going to look at a layered approach to this underlying practice, look at our defensive posture, and really map out those defenses at each layer, and then start working with our team on that. How does that work for you? That works a lot better because then instead of just checking the shell, I can go layers deep, right? And I, ca yes. I can evaluate your, your organization at, at multiple layers from, from process to technology to people and give you a much better picture of what it looks like from an external perspective. Absolutely. Wonderful. Okay, the next one, minimal scoping is a control. So I'm going to control what you can do in my environment. Not that I'm not giving you any information. I'm not just giving you anything to do respectfully in scoping. So the thought process here. I only want one VLAN and system tested on our DMZ in order to pass this pen test. I just want it done, Chris. I don't want you inside my environment. How does that work for you? Uh, so it's confusing to me where you're going to pay me so much money to tell you things you already know, but I'm here for it, right? Exactly. I'm not here for that. <laughs> 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 All right, let's do an alternative mindset here. I want to get as much out of this engagement, really, as much as I can in terms of the information. So we're looking at our infrastructure. We're assessing to provide underlying assurances, not only to myself, customers, and the employees of a respective organization. That's my responsibility. So we're looking at our stakeholders and looking at their concerns and looking at the robustness of our control program, allowing that to be the narrative that we discuss and build a scope and build an underlying rule of engagement. How's that work for you? Yeah, and this is where I'm thinking, great, I can, I can, I just saw this new weird thing, right? There's some new thing called, you know, AS rep roasting or, or Sam nightmare. And I want to go ahead and look for those, that new cool thing that he hasn't had a chance to work on yet and help him find that uh, before the adversary does. Absolutely. Then we do now uh, the threat treatment, okay? So this is another perspective. 
the utility of pen testing is inconsequential to what I do, okay? Nothing. Doesn't mean anything to me, I just need to do it, right? It's not gonna secure our assets. I do that, that's my job. The pen test team is to be treated as hostile, okay? And any negative connotation from the test ref reflect poorly on me. Now this is a total ego trip, right? Anybody seen that before? Come on. <laughs> exactly. We've got to take that out of the perspective, right? We've got to understand that it's not about me, it's about the organization, it's about our stakeholders, right? And I'm reflecting me as a scissor, right? If they find anything, that's my fault, that's on me. I've not respectfully gone through and understood our risks and managed a control program to assess and mitigate those to an acceptable level. That's all on me, and I'm, you know, in this case it's, well, I, I don't want this to be an RGE. Anybody know what an RGE is? Boom. I don't want to lose my job. I love doing what I do, Chris. Please don't, uh, <laughs> don't hurt me. But now change it, right? So Chris, if I give that to you, what's the point? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be in that same adversarial mindset, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be thinking, well, geez, how can I, how can I really get him? How can I, how can I demonstrate that there are holes in his armor in an ego-motivated kind of way? Yeah. Absolutely. Just reflect on it for a second. Is, uh, has anybody in the here experienced where the pen testers treated like they are an adversary? Like disrespect and just no communication, there's no interaction. Anybody experienced that in an environment? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've got to break those barriers down. I mean, that we're paying them to do this type of work for us, right? I mean, why would we want to treat them like that? I mean, maybe it's your assessment posture and that, it, yeah, I, I want to treat you as if you are an APT going through our threat modeling and follow that program, but it's not necessarily build, building the camaraderie that we're talking about here. I, I don't think you build a good program by going through and doing those types of assessment and treating them ultimately with the respect that is due, because you are an assist, you're the catalyst to making us better. How's that sound? And that's why we go out to dinner together, right? Exactly right. So now let's, again, let's change this perspective. So. He paid last time. <laughs> so the pen test team is an attribute of the security program, okay? We're looking at coordination. It is essential, that's why we're doing so much communication. That's why we're sharing information, building a narrative. And really now we're understanding the risk, our potential threats, not only today, but in the future. What are you seeing from your perspective? What research have you done? And this really affects the organization, right? I can do something positive uh, utilizing uh, this relationship. Yeah, and I'm excited about that too, right? I, I want, I know that this is not a point in time, I mean, in some ways it is a point in time assessment, but I'm not focused on, on the now, I'm focused on your maturing as, as an organization. I want your security to keep growing and getting better because that's why I'm doing this. A lot of, um, I don't think I've mentioned burnout yet. Was that yesterday we were talking? Yeah. No, yeah, so w one major source of burnout in pen testers is, to be frank, is when you come to the same organization year after year and you find the same holes. And at some point you're like, why am I doing this? Conversely, if we're actually having this great relationship and watching you move forward and love and hate you for it, you make it harder every year, right? Exactly. <laughs> then that's, that's great, that's much more fulfilling, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's what we wanna see, right? Because it builds, and that's why I say the, the, the longevity piece. And maybe some organizations now, we, we just, we change pen testers every year uh, just to get different perspective, different eyes on our system. But there is utility in, in utilizing the same penetration test, as long as you, know, you can build the, this respective camaraderie because they can see you grow. And in a lot of cases, those reports then reflect that growth, which is then not only positive to me, I'm doing the right thing, but then I'm also challenging you to be better because you don't want to be coming in and same hole, same hole. You just paint, you might as well just photocopy what you've done and provide it back, right? Doesn't make any sense. Right. So get your value. All right, we're going to review. So, apply liberally. Understand your role as a CISO and security executive. Understand what that means in terms of the environment. It's not about me, it's about the stakeholder, it's about the organization. It's about protecting brand and reputation and understanding our risks. Want to use the capabilities presented to inform, to make us better, move us forward as a narrative for the organization. It's why we're here, right? It's why we're at RSA. Learning about what we can do. What are the possibilities that exist? And then really from a penetration testing perspective, I'll give you the last two. Yeah, and that's on us, right? To, to, to build that relationship. And, and I know we tend to be the person on the keyboard, the introverted, but, but it, this is about relationships. If, if we can build that trust, then we're gonna have a more effective test and they're gonna grow more and, and, and everybody wins. 
because then they're, they're, they're managing their assets, right? Not, not that they prevented the shell or they blocked this one thing, log for j, but it's that is now they can keep running their business. They can keep their people safe, keep their customers' data protected, uh, and that's, that's a win. That's a big win for everybody. Absolutely, absolutely. So, in conclusion, what we've got, having a pen test for a reason, now that reason can go across multiple contexts, right? Check box, I just wanna do it just to make sure that I know I'm protected, but I'll have somebody else verify it or I'm looking to build, grow, uh, and articulate a program that is successful. Want to focus on the goals, okay? So it's not a report card against the respective individual or team or organization, but it's working towards a goal of increasing maturity in a respective security program. That's what we're trying to do together. That's why we pay um, Chris to come in and do this. Want to gauge this capability. We want to maximize the experience. That's why we have such a good relationship in this process is because it does maximize that. You're gonna make more friends than you are enemies by doing this, and it allows you then to share information, be able to build an underlying relationship where they want to come back and understand what improvements have you done, why it's a motivator in a lot of cases. And then ultimately, it's not us, it's them. It's not where it's adversarial. It, it shouldn't be, it, it should be an engagement that is beneficial to both sides. Hope we've shown that today, and Chris, I'll leave it to you to conclude. Yeah, and, and just for the red folks in the room, just, just remember that it's not about the shells. It's not about the, all the, the, the weird little nerdy technical things we can find. It's, it's about keeping the business running. Uh, it's, about, um, it's about building trust so that, so that maybe next time they will give you the source code to the web application you're testing, right? So you can, you can see more and learn more and help them grow more. Uh, and then and at the same time, too, as, as long as they're giving us all the network diagrams and maybe unprivileged user access and privileged user access, then we should lay our cards on the table, too. These are the things I'm gonna do. This is when I'm gonna do it. Hey, I'm about to fire this thing. Uh, let's keep everybody talking and communicating so that we can, so we, so we can be best friends and oh, stronger, stronger together. together, right? They Please, picked the theme based right? off our talk. We're pretty sure, right? <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Come on up, questions, comments, concerns, please. Yes. Uh, great presentation, but I think they have the wrong set of slides un linked under your uh, agenda item. Oh. On the website. Someone hacked it. Chris. <laughs> it wasn't me. Yeah, thanks. Oh, okay. Can I have this? Yeah. Thanks. thanks for pointing that out. Someone actually did point that out earlier. So um, I talked to someone, they're getting it fixed. The website updates twice a day. So just check back later. They should be good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate from the, it. From the left side of the stage? Go ahead. Hey, uh, thanks very much. This was informative. I wanted to uh, ask about something you touched on, which is um, at what point would you want to change uh, firms for a fresh perspective or just, you know, a, a new set of eyes on your environment? Um, you know, would you measure that in years or just specific engagements or can you talk yeah, a little I think bit it's about that? Specific engagements. I think ultimately what it is is a value proposition at the end of the day. You know, if this relationship's getting to the point where, you know, it's, you've done everything that you can or you're not seeing underlying value, then it maybe makes sense to do, uh, find another. One of the things I've done in the past is um, specific parts of the engagement, like web application. I've gone with another firm just to get an idea of what they're seeing in terms of this. So segmenting parts of our respective uh, penetration testing program, allowing that to come in and feed, because one of the things it also does is assess and like, what value am I getting from the other firm what value am I getting from here? Uh, and then allows you to you know, gradually do that. Again, in some cases you may, you know, a couple years you say, okay, I think we're good. I think it's time to move on. You know, in the audit field, it's like every three years, right? We've got to move on, get new eyes in uh, respectfully. In this case, I think it's a little bit of a different narrative because um, we want to build that camaraderie, we want to build that assessment program. But yeah, I've split mine up into phases, allowed phases to be done by others, um, just to get that feedback, just to see um, you know, if there is a difference of capability in some spaces, and a lot, what I've found, unfortunately, is not, is um, should have just stayed uh, with the respective organization that I've been working with, but uh, that's one way you could approach it. Th is that fair? Yeah, thank you. Absolutely, thank you, sir. Uh, yeah. uh, while I, l I absolutely um, liked the part of the pen test, so how to approach it, and I think I've learned something, and, and we do like d 12 pen tests a year, so I still, learn something so it's very valuable. I kind of some have some nuance on the CISO part because in some, while I understand that you want to run a business and have continuous flow of money, 
uh, there is also value, in my opinion, in changing the pen test firm, uh, or at least to have from a pen test firm the assurance that the tester is changed or the uh, perspective is changed because uh, it, it gets very easily into complacency. I can tell you this is happening. Uh, it's one of the things I, I started when I joined my company. They always had the same auditor and I say that's completely complacent and doesn't work. There are even some uh, um, regulations that require like the Paris Stock Exchange requires you to do a pen test and change the firm company every year or every two years. So I think this aspect needs to be um, highlighted. Another very quick thing on the adversarial aspect. I don't think that adversarial is necessarily negative, you know, it doesn't have to be disrespectful, you know. I, I don't see these two words as synonym. So it, it can be a legitimate approach to be, to have an adversarial uh, approach. I know you didn't mean that, but no, just wanted right. to. No, 100%. It's a great observation. And, and you're right, there are underlying regulations that not, you're not going to allow you to ent entertain this type of relationship over a period of time. Absolutely. You work within the confines of your context, right? This is an opinion. I'm not telling you to go do this. I'm telling you this works for me. This works for our organization. You've got to take this and kind of bake it yourself, right? This is a recipe for where I've seen success. Wanted to share that with you. And ultimately, you can say, well, I can certainly bake the cake to the exact recipe, or I've got to make a few changes here, right? Uh, and I appreciate the narrative, absolutely. And the adversary piece, absolutely right. I love doing that. What I do in terms of uh, the adversary perspective is my internal team, I don't even say the pen testers are coming in. I want to look at incident response as a part of that adversary capability. And you're absolutely right, but it's not the, the disrespect that we, you know, I was using that kind of being dramatic, as it were. I'll use some air quotes as well, why not? Do you know what I mean? I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Hi there. I got, I got two uh, questions. My first question is around, um, you know, how much noise would be appropriate for an assessment beyond initial access, right? Because um, I, I'm kind of curious, you know, once an adversary gets that initial access, are they actually creating a lot of noise? Are you seeing that or are they being more covert? And, and how do you kind of balance that whenever you're bringing someone in to assess your environment? The other um, question I have is around how you kind of handle uh, clients that have MDR services or you know some managed provider that may be monitoring your environment uh, you know what kind of notification or interaction should we have on the front end with them because in essence you, you kind of want to understand if they're doing their job well for you uh, but you also don't want to obviously create any liabilities or, or a breach of contract or problems so yeah, so, so to the second one, we, we've been hired specifically to test response companies. Like we have an MSSP, we don't think they're doing anything, could you, could you just come in and make some noise? And that was the engagement. So we came in and like tried some quiet things, got a little louder, a little louder, run like interpreter or reverse shell, and then finally there was like an email they got from the company and like we keep doing it and like that was the end of the communication. So I think those are valuable to test, right? Like if you don't, if you don't have that good, even, even if you do have some level of trust with your provider, yeah, absolutely test that. And I think that gets back to your first question is of you know, how much noise do you make? I, I start as quietly as I can. Uh, and some people will pick me up even when I'm being quiet. And then and I just turn it up and turn it up until they start catching me at the perimeter, uh, inside Active Directory, wherever I'm, I'm gonna be in the environment, yep. Thank you guys. Thank you. Uh, let's assume I'm a regulator or on the board of directors. How much, uh, if I get an executive summary how much detail should there be in that uh, executive summary? So, so I'll, I'll get, I, think, I think maybe we both answer this one. Sure, go so, for it. So we, we tend to write a, a, a one-page summary that, um, that's high level. We don't use terms as, as complex as IP address, so we keep it, you know, so that the, the CEO can read it and, and understand that, well, you know, here are, um, we're talking like 40,000 foot level. So you've, uh, some of your security policies may need to be reviewed and, you might want to consider uh, additional staffing or different vendors for this and that. So we, we keep it relatively high level and then get deeper in, in the methodology and findings. Is that? Yeah, I mean, it's what can your board tolerate in terms of technical. So my respective board love to see the technical pieces. Yeah. So the executive report is different for them, but it's underlying a tolerance of what they either will gloss their eyes over and they'll be asleep in five minutes or it's something that they want to engage in. and. Ultimately, then that's part of a, an underlying program that sets me up for success in a lot of cases. 
you know, it's a funny narrative because we, um, you know, there should be an expectation, at least in my perspective, and obviously I'm biased in this space, but at the board level, there should be a, an elementary understanding of what cybersecurity is and cyber risk, right? So that we can be more detailed and understand that respective process. Now, the funny thing is, is when AI comes out, everybody's an expert, right? Board of directors, well, where's all the AI? How are we using chat GTP? You know, they're talking about large language models, supervised, it's like, well, where's the security side of the, all of this for the past 30 years that you've not learned? But when this comes out, you know, it's, it, it, so it's a funny narrative and you've got to contextualize it for yourself. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense, sir? Yeah, yeah, I, I was just thinking that like uh, a report that says, oh, we found seven vulnerabilities and that's it, that would be pretty oh, skin, absolutely. wouldn't it? Oh, absolutely. It yeah. doesn't sound like a page, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I go doesn't longer. sound like a page. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> longer. Absolutely right. All right, thanks a lot. This is very informative. Uh, I have two questions. The first one, um, so assuming that I'm a very experienced guy uh, and I want to hire a third party to come to do the pen test. So I have, let's say, two options now, multiple, multiple options, but let's focus on two options. So one is the extreme that I'm, I'm, I'm willing to give you uh, a set of IP addresses, uh, and I'm going to tell you this is a black box test and you have nothing, and I set up control. I set up controls on my firewall to block any scanning, for example. So the moment that you try, you, the moment you, you try to scan my IP addresses, you're blocked, your reports, oh, nice and clean, check. I know this is not very beneficial for me as a CISO, but on the other hand, my auditor, my, my compliance team is very happy that, oh, you have a wonderful report. To me, that's cheating. The other extreme part, which is, I'm gonna hire you, I know better, so I'm gonna give you everything. I'm gonna give you full addresses, I'm gonna give you the network diagrams, we'll set together, set up sessions, give you even credentials, tell you what to do and what I think that's vulnerable, what to focus on, and now you come up with a Christmas tree report. My auditors are not happy. My compliance is very pissed. And everybody said, no, what are you doing? So kind of like I'm in control now to make it very bright. And I, make, and I also am in control to make it very ugly. Uh, my question is, is there a standard that's kind of like, OK, this is the way you should do pen test? No, there are many. And in your report, can you like highlight which way? Because to me, if I'm a third party that I'm demanding you to do um, a pen test to before I choose you as a vendor, um, I want to see actually what the scope of the testing. Most of the time, the summary, the executive, executive summary is like very short, like you said, very kind of like two paragraphs. Don't, don't, don't tell me a lot about the security posture. So, so that's number one. The other one, I'm gonna make it quick. Um, if I'm also a very experienced guy, as no, I, I know you're a pen tester, here what tools that I want you to do. Uh, this is the set of tools. And I, I tried that before, kind of like, and I found resistance from the pen testers. No, you didn't tell me what to do, let me handle it. And then when the report comes, the detailed report, I know the tools didn't really satisfy what I was looking for. Is there like a, a best practice that you guys recommend on like what tools? I, I know that the, the, the frameworks and, you know, I'm a pen tester myself, but is there like a set of structure about the, the tooling part, not the whole process? What tool to use to kind of gain more yeah. about the security posture. Yeah, and, and so there are lots of pen testing frameworks that there's, there isn't just one, right? And, and there are lots of tools. We'll, we'll pick whatever we need and we have the good fortune that Sean lets us use whatever we need. Yeah, and for the Christmas tree report, I guess there's two sides of things. It seems like it's a compliance program that's been managed to a scope that just wants to look at green, right? Everything's good. For me, in my role, I wanna see the Christmas tree. I, I'm not gonna sleep good at night by m managing or running a compliance program. It's a security program with a byproduct of, I believe, good security 
uh, is compliance uh, ultimately in that space. So I'd rather know and start working on all the vulnerability or turning the cl Christmas tree green. Um, and and, so and maybe there's a piece of educating your auditors? I think so. I think if the auditors are defining or describing what they want to see, mm -hmm. I'm not sure necessarily that's healthy for an organization to uh, not fully evaluate its security posture. You're uh, putting yourself in a, uh, uh, again, they may sleep well at night, but you surely won't. Yeah. Sorry. Well, thanks so much. Uh, we're getting, getting the hook here, but we're going to yep. be out, out in the hallway if you want to talk some more. Yep, thanks. Be out there. Appreciate yep. it. Thank yes. you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.